If you want to support these projects, head over to mulliganbrothers.com where you can now buy the Inspire Change t-shirts and much, much more. And please consider becoming a YouTube member with the join button down below. Before that, let's jump into the highlights. And whereabouts did you grow up, area, and also just description of what that was like? So I grew up here in the beautiful city of Plymouth. Uh, born and bred here, stayed here. Um, have no plans to leave here because um, I love this place. Um, and growing up was, you know, I had a very privileged childhood. You know, I never wanted for anything, never needed anything. Everything was provided for me. Um, never really faced any hardships growing up. So I was very, very lucky in that respect. For an American audience, description of what Plymouth is like. So Plymouth is an ocean city. We're on the coast, which is great. We're right by the water. So, um, and, and I love the water. So it's a huge benefit for me, but it's a very small city. You know, it's a very military city. We have the Royal Marines are here, the Royal Navy are here. We have the army here. The only thing we don't have is the Royal Air Force. We have a big university. So it's very diverse. You know, we have the people that live here, the locals, the university population and the military population, which is another reason why I love it so much. So yeah, to, is, is that what's led to a pathway to the military? The fact that you're in, in this place where it's surrounded by military, like, and if it is, how did you make the transition from like school into the military? So that's a, it's a funny story. You know, when I was about 15 and a half, all the people that I grew up with, all my friends were two or three years older than me. So when I was about 15 and a half, coming towards the end of my compulsory education, most of my friends had left school, left education, and gone on to start their careers. And a huge chunk of them had joined the military. And they were in the army. Uh, we had, I had friends in Germany, friends in the UK, friends that were dotted all over the world. And they would always come home on their leave periods. And it seemed like they always had you know, cool stories to tell me. They had money in the bank. They were always out partying and having a good time. And I reached that point in my life where I had to make a decision. You know, I'm nearly 16, my exams are on the horizon. What do I want to do? Do I want to go on to further education or do I want to go and start a career? And because of the influence that they had on me, you know, it kind of steered me towards the career path, you know, and because they were most of them were military, I thought that's what I want to do. Now, the strange thing is that I didn't know who the Royal Marines were. You know, despite them having a big footprint in Plymouth and in this city, I just thought that if you wanted to be a soldier, you know, and run around doing cool stuff with bayonets in your teeth and crawling through the mud, that you join the army. So one of my friends who was already serving took me down to the career center one day and I spoke to the recruiter. He gave me all the paperwork that I needed. Because of my age, I had to take it back and get my parents to sign it. And then when I did, my dad told me that I had an uncle who was actually a retired war marine and he only lived about 15 miles at the road. So we hopped in the car, we drove up there one weekend and he talked me through his entire career. He started as a marine, which is our equivalent of a private and 22 years later he retired as a captain. And he told me why the Royal Marines were different, the kind of things that he'd done in his career what I could expect to experience if that's the route that I wanted to go down. So I then went back home, back to the career center. I spoke to the Royal Marines recruiter and he pulled out, this is how long ago it was, he pulled out the VHS cassette. He put it in one of those TV video combi things that were all the rage back in the day. And I watched this video and my jaw like hit the floor. I saw guys, you know, faster up in that helicopters skiing in the Arctic, up to their chest in water going through the jungle. You know, and it just seemed like these guys could go anywhere, do anything at any time. And I got goosebumps. I'm getting goosebumps now just thinking about it. And that was it. You know, my mind was made up. I was like, that's what I want to do. So I went back to school, did my exams, did pretty well. You know, I got nine A to C's, one D, so I could have easily gone on to the college university later on. But my mind was was made up. I wanted to be a, a Royal Marines commando and that was all I was focused on. And when I left school, that's exactly what I did. Pre-military, 
What was your mindset like as, as, a, as a young person, as a, as a young man? What was your was it, was it hot, as, as hard as it is now? Did the military shape it, or did you always have that about yourself? The military definitely strengthened and, and molded my mindset. But you know, I was born in the 80s, grew up in the 90s. I'm a, I'm a big action movie fan. So I grew up with your Stallones, your Schwarzeneggers, your John claude Van Dams, and I used to watch these movies all the time. And that's what I wanted to be like. I wanted to be the big, tough guy, but the, the kind, gentle guy at the same time. Do you know what I mean? Like the, the gentleman hero type thing. And it kind of all tied in with pushing me towards the military. Now, I, I trained martial arts a lot when I was younger, before I joined. I did Muay Thai, full contact kickboxing and boxing. And I think that helped initiate that kind of mindset of train hard, you know, you get in the ring, you compete, don't give up, keep fighting, you know, just keep pushing, 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 self-development, improving yourself, trying to push your limits and see what it is you're capable of doing. So it kind of started at 12, 13 through martial arts. And then when I went into the, the Royal Marines, you know, it just accelerated massively. The VHS that you'd watched, you know, when you got that first experience, was it what you'd expected? The first physical experience? Yeah, yeah. So it was intense. You know, when you when you apply for the Royal Marines, back in the day, you used to have to do what was called the Potential Royal Marines course, which is three days at the Commando Training Center of just non-stop physical activity. You know, up at five o'clock in the morning, straight into the gym, straight down to the assault course, five minutes to eat. You know, it's, it's like a three day, what we call a, a beasting. And it's an opportunity for you as an individual to have that small experience and decide is this really for me or is this not for me and it's a chance for the people that are training and assessing you to look at you and go okay he's ready we can start training or you need to go back and maybe do a bit more physical training and rethink about what it is you want unfortunately i passed it you know i went there passed it first time when i was i think i was 16 at the time or 17 and then came home I had a training program that was written specifically for me by the Royal Marines, and that's all I did. I wasn't interested in anything else, you know, going out partying, messing around. It was just training, following that program to the letter, waiting for a letter to drop on my doorstep saying, come and start your training. So the, the, real, the Royal Marines training, what is that like? Like, what is that process like? It's brutal. Um, it's, it's world renowned for being arguably the, the longest and hardest regular forces training in the world. Special forces training is obviously that next level, but in terms of regular forces infantry, it's, it's the longest and hardest in the world. And you have to be extremely fit physically, and that's, it's very progressive and gradual, and you build up over 32 plus weeks to be able to do the, the final phase, which is called the commando phase. But if you're not mentally robust, if you can't be cold, wet, sleep deprived, food deprived, you know, covered in blisters with four or five miles left to march, if you can't do that and conquer your mind, then you won't make it. And then I've seen people that are a hundred times fitter than me physically fail because they don't like the other side of it. The, the mindset, like, yeah, mm -hmm. describe, describe that of what you feel it takes to get past that trainer. You have to evolve, like, very rapidly. You know, I was 17 years old when I did it, I was still a boy, and I was surrounded by men. I was the second youngest in my troop. Everyone else had more life experience and, and more experience in everything than I did. And it was very overwhelming, it was very scary, it was very intimidating, and you have to adapt really quickly and just run with it. And I think you develop your own way of dealing with it. And what I did personally was, you know, 30 weeks is a long time. It's 32 now, it was 30 when I did it. You have to break that down into chunks, you know, almost month by month, week by week, and then sometimes day by day. And that was the mindset that I adopted. I just thought, right, get through this day, get through this week get through this month, tick the box, and then we restart again and, you know, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. And eventually, you know, as long and, and as arduous as it was, eventually you'll get there 
and then you can start your career and do the fun stuff. If you enjoyed the video, please consider going to mulliganbrothers.com where you can now buy the new Inspire Change t-shirts, the LFG t-shirts, the hardest worker in the room t-shirts. Everybody who's been supporting us has made this project possible and projects like this in the future possible. We cannot fly all around the world with our film crew and ourselves and do these interviews and documentaries without your support. So thank you very much. The support has been amazing and we appreciate it. Um, also, there is a join button down below where you can consider becoming a YouTube member of this channel by hitting that join button. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to follow us on the behind the scenes stuff of our editor at Neve Mulligan X on Instagram or at Jordan Mulligan Brother for myself on Instagram as well, you can see what we get up to on a day to day basis. Thank you for watching. Have a blessed and productive day. Go inspire some change and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.